It would seem I had escaped their wrath. For a time, at least. The voices feed on my terror, and I am not afraid any more. It has been a vicious battle the past two years to escape the claims the demon scamperings had taken in my skull. They're still not completely gone. They arise to tease me late at night and in quiet moments alone. But without the sustenance of terror, they can neither stay for long nor cause quite the effect they did such a short time ago. I hardly recall its reality, that life. No, this life, for it is one and it is the same. <clears throat> I hardly can recall the reality of my own life. It seems so distant as though a generation of old, yet not even has it been one thousand days since its passing. At first, it was the vivid awareness of what I had become and the courses of action which a life as such had prompted me to enact which lay the haunting desires to sleep. Now, with awareness such as spectre fading with time, it falls upon alternative faculties to stay the demon beast. Most forthwith be it simple ignorance be it I am coming unto ignorance of the woes of such haunts, yet again I am ignorant of the true comforts brought upon by the fulfillment of my desires. <clears throat> I simply do not recall, and therefore I do not know. Furthermore, I am no longer pressed to seek such comforts from the world around me, for I have found a certain comfort within my being. Pride, perhaps, is it to be called. Whatever I may be called upon as, demon, haunt, saint, creature, fool. I know not which of these things or other am I, yet whichever it may be I will find solace in its fact. And until such a time as I know, I shall find the soulless same amongst its unfact. For if I am a saint, then so be it. Yet if I am a fool, then accomplished a fool am I. And if I am a creature, then accomplished a creature am I. Goals have I set upon my path, and so these same goals are that which I have now seen as come to pass, and I am hardly done yet. <clears throat> the screams of a mind of mine, now two years gone and past, have faded away to be replaced with recordings more current. Always screaming. Always. Yet easier to deal with come a mind set on straight. My powers now begin to fail and my worries give voice to the fear I will fall completely apart, fall into unbeing and fade away to nothingness. Jaw now filled with plastic and cement as my eyes and ears become each equally now failing. Life has just begun, and yet such debts I am weighed beneath. Mine sharp as ever, although mayhap not as such. For how am I to know how my mind was once or twice or three times a lifetime ago? I suppose I truly must pay for my experience wrought. I pay with my senses, and I pay with my faculties. A purse well endowed, not so much as I figured, yet a coin well spent? Yes, I believe so. The magic, thick and viscous, now rips through my veins, manifesting daily as though a conjurer weaving spells. I think and I desire and my will does come to pass. I dream and foresee, and my foresight embodies the tangible. 
I try to use these powers as best I can to benefit those around me and also to benefit myself. Fret do I often, for the power of the magic has become now so strong. A thought or intuition misplaced now spelling terrors to come. But is it so? Does the magic of lightness truly empower those spells so very dark? Dubious at best, so do I suspect. Yet the magic of darkness is not so far gone from the tips of these frail fingers. Leak over unto it may? Again, I predict this as unlikely. I came once more into being having had many adjustments made. Came back unto this earth so soiled as a champion of truth and of justice. Having slain the demon beast, the king of all evils, myself the manifestation. Outwards among the wild things now was I to be thrust and challenged and baptized of fire. Day from dawn and eve of dusk thereafter the demon had been quelled, ridden was with fear and fret, ridden by terror of utter success. Ignorant of all fears came success to pass. More often and more did it so until such a time as success was the only way onwards. An addiction itself had it become, and for it a thirst imbued. A thirst which, readily satisfied, rarely went unquenched, yet even so it would linger on and on for aeons. I have come from the darkness out unto a crusade of light and holy fire which now burns within my mind. The pureness rages forth from within and claims all those it reaches out to finger with glorious tendrils stretching. Oft moments, in times alone, I am able to observe, as though from outside of myself, the things which I am. Seemed undeserving success, and pride, and careless recklessness bundled all together with the squadron of faults known to they the public, and legions more known not to they, yet still readily available to be defined, glimpsed within my many actions and decisions and modes of thought unknown to the lay peoples. When I observe myself from without such as this, I do look a fool. Tempted am I to believe. Were I not stuck in my own body, I'd have half a mind to reach across and slap myself upside the head. Quit playing at these games, Jester. A harsh reality awaits your return without a care for delay. Is that which I would demand of myself. There are other times yet when I still feel that seizing jolt of terror and of frustration and of anger and of futility at all of these things whence engaging in otherwise normal and dismal day-to-day -day activities. This jolt is one of utmost paranoid suspicion that the world around me laughs and jokes at my expense that all of the people in my life I hold so very dear and trusted, that even they do not confront me face to face in these matters, and that therefore I am so truly alone, the rest of the world mocking and too disrespectful to say anything in manner direct. Too afraid to confront me and let me in on the secret kept. The secret that I am the secret what everyone keeps. I am the focus of all the world, and without me they are all to be left without a muse. Who am I? What makes me different from the villain I was before? Before what? Before this. I make different decisions now. And these decisions provide me 
with internal power to act how I truly desire. Although my desires are often far from appropriate. Perhaps I was better without such abilities. Perhaps I am just the same with or without and there actually are no abilities at all. Perhaps I am making the same decisions as I always have, yet now they are cleverly disguised as things which are new and different. This theory, rather unlikely. What, however, is not, but rather more likely, is the theory that I am making unbreached decisions and taking paths which have never been taken before. But that the reason I do these things and the reason I did the others is the same. If one performs two individual actions with one symmetrical driving force behind each, then how different are these actions truly? As I sit awake in thought and in brooding contemplation, I hypothesize. I guess and I label and I compartmentalize that what is my mind and that what is my being. Suppose, do I, it is trouble I have in observing the parallels between the now and the before. How it is that I have come to become that which I am now by way and by means of that which I was previously, no do I not. Lacking am I in practical attempts to theoretically breach the topic. Rather, my suppositions lie alongside in observation of the fact that I have no such suppositions. Therefore, I then suppose that it is a lack of supposing which has caused my discontent, an inability to draw the parallels and therefore to understand how it is that I am what it is I seem to be. Further away from my core, from my essence, do I drift with each day passing, essence being that which I am of, that from which I come, and thus that which is what makes me who I am. As I ponder this, I am assuming my essence is that horrible part of my soul, the sociopathic part, the harbor of my suicidal tendencies and homicidal thought patterns. That which I suspect always has lain dormant, yet truly was brought to fruit within the most ripe delusions of the Whig. Why is this that what must be it which makes me? Was it not another which made he, and thus would be more even essential to the product? Is not it all so absolutely essential to how it all is now? So strange a thing is this thing what is sobriety? Oftentimes find I myself experiencing feelings of discomfort extreme. A result direct of the bliss and perfection of daily interaction. Visualize, execute, experience. No question has the universe for me in regard to it. No trouble has the universe for me in it procuring, realizing, manifesting, and so forth. It simply is flawless, so that it is now I who question the universe instead of the universe in question of I. As slayer of king, the beast what am I, I stand now in the eye of many. However, as I stand in eye of I, this does not stand to pass. For myself the demon still here now stands and impress its mind upon the minds of they, those whom hath come to find a word of profit that they may stay their path. Far from slain a demon controlled and put to bind within the mind, this mind of mine, and tempered and calmed beneath brooding desire. No longer doth this demon reign, yet still I dormant in office of consultation. Still is it primary source of logic and information. Now, with teachings amassed and learned, the thing unlikely to return to faults of paths of past, 
Likely now we shall evolve and bare our teeth and stand up tall and pounce back upon our oppressors. Beast and wolf shall fully mesh as fangs tear vein and bone from flesh and as mine supportingly cackles. Caged, not felled, the beast now broods, and time it bides and hair it smooths, and subtle as a panther black it comes to roam within the pack of wolfish innovation. The wolves view it as darkened brother of the same yet of another, and time stands sole in path of conformation. Once within which voice shall win the screaming battles of its mind? Shall it conform entire among the wise old wolves and sharpened young? Or shall it revert to baser desires? Beautiful is it to experience nostalgic reminiscence so true of a life unveiled by shadow of secrecy. The people whom I lay trust unto, therefore lay trust unto I, and with this trust comes a pairing of words which support the supreme presence of my being. Not that a being supreme is a thing incredible, for all are we beings of potential supremacy, and to all be supreme need not devalue the term. The difference between us and they, however, is simply but the making of a fist. For to attain greatness one must seize the greatness placed before him. A grip falling short of purpose leave only a man short of his. One must find the courage to grasp at what, what one is denied. And one must find the self-compassion to not halt at conscience one's own, lest it betray one. Should path as such continue unquelled, I know not what that future may for me hold, for I simply fail in all attempts to conceive of such a product grand. Thus know not I what hold may the future, nor with this am I concerned. For now is the present and within such I am all I seek to be, and more, and that what I seek to be is indeed so very, very great.